So I've decided that one of my new hobbies is going to be becoming a game developer. I've always played games throughout my whole life, but now I want to learn how to make them. So I've made some games in the past that are very simple, but I didn't do them using any game engines. I made some pure JavaScript games like Snake in the web browser, and that actually took a ton of time. I didn't realize that it would have been so much easier to use something like Unity to just make that instead of having everything from scratch. So originally I thought that making games and becoming a game developer was a ton of programming. Like from everything from scratch, from the physics to what shows up on the screen. So I was misled by myself, I guess, in the beginning. And it kind of led me off the path of game development because I thought it would be too much of a time sink to become fruitful, I guess. So my plan right now to get started is to go watch a Bracky tutorial and then I'm going to come back and make a game. I'll figure out what the game's going to be after I watch it, so I'll be right back. So I just finished that Bracky's tutorial and I'd say that I'm basically a professional game developer now. It only took me like an hour and a half, but yeah. I, I, I learned everything I need to know from that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so let's make a game. So I could start off with a simple game like Pong or something, or just or a 2D game that's pretty simple. But you know what, I'm just going to dive in and let's make Rocket League. It's a game that I've had a ton of hours in in the past. I don't play it that much anymore, but I think if I made it myself, I'd play it more. So let's figure that out. So I know that I can't possibly recreate every aspect of Rocket League in 48 hours, but I will consider this challenge a success if I could get the following done. A car that drives, a ball, a goal, boost for the car, the map itself, double jumps and front flips, and hopefully more than one player. Because if I get all of these things done, I will have my own playable version of Rocket League. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add the ball. To do that, let's add a sphere and then apply gravity to it. And at the moment, this ball is looking kind of thick. So let's make it bounce. To do that, I just make a physics material and give it a little bit of bounciness and there we go now it's bouncing this ball may not seem like much but it's actually the first thing I've ever made in unity and I'm pretty proud of it so uh, props to me uh, all right so now we have a ball that has physics uh, let's add a car okay so this cube here is my first attempt at a car I just added a wheel to it and now we're gonna see oh that's how that works okay all right let's not do that again okay, so currently my so-called car is just a cube so let's fix that I've never done any 3D modeling before, but I believe that learning new skills is a great thing to do. That's why I'm going to be following this very detailed tutorial on how to make a car in Blender, and I'm not going to take the first free car I find on the asset store. Now that that tutorial is complete, our car is looking a lot better, but it still doesn't move yet. So let's add a wheel collider to one of the tires and make it spin, and let's see if that will make it move. Alright, well at least it's moving. Let's try adding it to the rest of the tires and see if that evens this thing out. Now that looks a little better, but the car is jittering in a weird way, but let's just say that that's the engine running. Because I tried to fix that for like 4 hours and still couldn't get it to go away, so the, the car is just on, okay? Leave me alone. The next thing I did was connect a camera to the car so it follows it, but that makes it a lot more noticeable when the car jitters, but hopefully I could fix that later by smoothing out the camera. I also made the A and D keys change the angles of the front tires so you could actually steer around. And now everything is working exactly as planned. The next thing I added was a goal. The goal is just a rectangle that things can go through. I managed to make it trigger an event when only the ball went through it. And right now, the, all it does is it tells you that there was a goal in the console. It doesn't do anything other than that. So let's add some goal explosions to this. I've heard a lot of good things about the Unity particle system, so let's try using that to make an explosion. Okay, it turns out there's a lot of settings involved in the particle system, so it looks like we're going to need another tutorial. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, that looks good enough to me. In, in the real Rocket League, that goal explosion actually has a force that sends everything flying. That would be great to add, but for now I'm just going to leave it plain and see if I could do that another day. Now I'm going to try to make the map itself. Okay, so for some of you that use Unity very often, you may see what is wrong with this picture here. And it is these blue play controls right above me. Because when they're blue, that means that you are in simulation mode, which means any changes you make are just for testing. That means any of the changes I'm making right now are not going to be safe. I'm not sure if this is just going to go right through it. Probably will. Oh my god. Hold up, roll that back. Did I just get possessed? I hate Unity. I hate Unity. 
<laughs> I don't really hate it. It was my fault, but that was that was bad. I knew that was gonna happen at some point. So now let's just redo that map again and regain that thirty minutes of work that I did. Okay, now we have it. We have a map that's just a bunch of rectangles, but it looks better, and you can get a goal. There it is. All right, on to new things. So currently there's a surprising lack of rockets in my Rocket League. Adding the boost mechanic should be pretty easy. All I need to do is apply a forward force to the car whenever you hold shift. All right, now we have a boost mechanic, but it's hard to tell when you're using it. So let's take another whack at the Unity Particle system and try to add a boost trail to the car. This should be easy enough, right? Okay, so this actually was pretty easy to set up and looks pretty great right from the start. Uh, I don't even think I need to change much, uh, but that is until you turn around and see the particles are just spawning all over the place and not disappearing, and they're also all facing one direction. So uh, back to the drawing board, I guess. So I thought this would be an easy fix, just changing the angle of the particles to make it point the same way that the car is facing. That's until I figured out the word quaternion, because that is how you mess with angles in Unity. And I've never heard of this word before, and for some reason I just couldn't get it to work for the life of me. I was trying to just negate the angle because I was able to get it so it would come out the front of the car perfectly. It would the, I could make the particles shoot out the front of the car, whichever way the car is facing, but I wanted them to come out the back, so I thought it would be simple enough to just reverse it. But for some reason, I just couldn't figure it out for so long until I found out this thing called Euler angles, and when I converted it to that, I was able to negate the angle by 180 degrees and for some reason it worked with Euler angles and I don't know why but I'm just gonna leave it alone because it actually worked. So now we got the boost set up and it's actually looking pretty good. I'm proud of that. I didn't really mess with the particle system at all because I just don't have time for it but it looks pretty good with just the white particles but I like the idea that I could just add whatever particles I want to add custom boost trails in the future. In Rocket League the cars can do double jumps and flips. Getting double jump to work was pretty easy. All I had to do was give the car the ability to jump twice and then reset that ability to jump whenever the car touches the ground. The actual jumping is just a force that's applied to the bottom of the car, similar to boost, but just in the upward direction instead. Flipping on the other hand will be a little bit more difficult. I did manage to get a basic front flip to work using only forces though, and it doesn't feel as smooth as it should because I think in Rocket League, it's almost like an animation that happens where you can't really get interrupted. Because with using just forces, if you crash into anything like the wall or the ball when you're hitting it, it will mess up your front flip and cause it not to finish. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. But for now, I'm just going to leave my front flip with forces because it's a little quirky and I like it like that. Also, the camera flips with the car as well. So I should probably figure out a way to lock the position of that camera in place. But I'm going to probably push that off to later and actually never do that. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do that in this uh, challenge. But let's just say I will later. In Rocket League, there's a boost that you can pick up all over the map to fuel your rocket, and the boost is actually limited. Right now, our boost is just unlimited. You can use it as much as you want. So let's make that a limited resource and make it spawnable on the map. So to do that, I just added a sphere and locked its position. I made it so you could drive through the sphere, and then when you hit it, it gets destroyed. It, I was trying to make it so it comes back after it gets destroyed, but the script that I was using to respawn it was on the object itself, and whenever I destroyed the object, I was destroying the script along with it. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but since I'm not used to Unity, the workaround that I found was just to make the sphere invisible and have it deactivated basically while it's invisible and then just make it reactivated and visible again. So instead of destroying it and making it respawn, it's just uh, turning off and turning back on. And that was my workaround to figure that out. That might be the right way, but I'm sure there's a different way to do it. I probably could have kept the script off of the object itself and then it wouldn't get deleted. So I only have about 30 minutes left in my 48 hour challenge, and I realized that my game sucks. Not because it's bad, well, okay, it's because it's bad, but it's also because I never made a second player, so you can't even play the game with anybody. So let's see if that's possible to do in 30 minutes. I thought that this was going to be harder than it actually was, because I was pushing it off till the end, but I probably could have implemented this from the beginning, because all that you need to do is duplicate your car, and then change the viewport for each car's camera. I thought it was gonna be really complicated to do that, but you just set the resolution to half the screen on one and then half the screen on the other, 
and you could see both cameras at the same time. And then what I did with the controls was I just changed the script for the one car to have different controls from the other car. So they would have independent controls. In the beginning, they both shared the same controls, so they would drive the same exact way. So I had to fix that by just separating it so two players could play on the same keyboard, similar to something like Cuphead, where you each get uh, half of the keyboard to play with. The last thing I did was slap a simple UI onto it, which keeps track of the boost, the time, and the score for both teams. Um, the boost only works for one car right now, but I'll fix that in the future. But but that really makes this game look more polished in the end. Like It's actually playable now. You could have two people play, and they could try to get the highest score in five minutes. So time is officially up, and I'm actually pretty impressed with how things turned out. I mean, it's definitely not great, but it's a lot more than I expected for my very first game. Especially considering that I had a 48 hour timeline and I spent half that time not actually programming. I'd say I probably got about 24 hours of programming in. So for less than a day's worth of work, this was actually a pretty big accomplishment for me. And I'd love to see what the next challenge is like. I think for the next one, I may make it a 48 hour total programming limit that I will fill throughout the week instead of making it just a 48 hour time limit because I want to have 48 hours of pure programming where I could take breaks throughout the week but as long as I rank up 48 hours worth of programming I will count that so maybe my next challenge will be a different game or I will just continue this one for the other 20, 24 hours to complete it if you want to follow along while I'm programming I actually stream this whole thing on twitch at twitch.tv slash john the markspin and I'll probably do more things like this in the future because I had a lot of fun doing this for my first game and I think I might do this every weekend. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.